Welcome to the Mastery of Movement series. In this series, I take one of the core movements you find in your training, give you a couple quick tips that you can apply to get the most out of those exercises during your workouts. Today, I wanna to talk about pressing. So push-ups, bench press, overhead press, you name it. And I wanna give you three things to focus on. Number one, I want you to think about bracing with the muscles around your spine. We want to support the spine during any sort of press work. Now, the spine is going to move and that's okay, but we want it to be controlled movement. And the way we make it controlled movement is by bracing with the muscles around the spine, all the way around the spine, not just the abs. I want everything lighting up nice and strong. With that brace in place, you can now, number two, control the path of your arm. As we get a little bit heavier with weights or a little bit fatigued in a workout, sometimes those elbows like to get a little wobbly and out of control. Sometimes the wrist can flail all over the place and we want to control that during these press motions. If you're pressing overhead, we wanna keep that elbow strong, wrist stable. If you're pressing out in front, elbows don't wanna be wobbling all over the place. Wrist needs to be nice and stable. And you wanna control that path that the arm is pressing. Last one is head position. I don't wanna see your head kind of moving all over the place. I want you to be nice and stable, eyes looking straight ahead, because your body likes to follow where your eyes go. So if you're looking all over the place, you can see just as I look away, this shoulder starts to move. I look back this way, this shoulder starts to move. And it can start to throw my body out of position during a press. Again, movement is a great thing when we control that movement and really maintain that control through the full range of it. So next up, we're going to head to the gym and look at a couple examples of press motions that you'll find in your workouts and see how these three points play out. First up, let's look at a push-up completed from the feet or from the knees. Remember, cue number one is to brace the musculature around your spine. We want to establish that strong brace in the midsection to help make that press more effective. I like to think of the cue head to heel, straight as steel. This gives me a great visual for what I'm trying to accomplish and how strong I'm trying to be with my torso. With that brace established, you can now work on that arm path. I don't want to see a wide or a high elbow position during push-ups due to the stress it places on the neck and the shoulders as well. I want you to mimic either an arrow position or elbows tight to your body as you execute the push-up. This will help keep stress off the neck and shoulders and really utilize those pecs and triceps effectively. Remember, try to minimize that elbow shake as well. Finally, remember, your body likes to follow your eyes. So make sure you keep those eyes looking down, roughly a foot in front of your fingertips and keep your head relatively still. Moving on, let's look at presses completed with dumbbells or barbells. The same cues apply. Number one, we wanna create that 360 degree brace around the spine. Remember, the spine can move, that's okay, but we want it to be controlled movement. Even though you're being supported by a bench during these movements, it's good repetition to get used to bracing around that spine and being intentional with your brace. Once that brace is established, pick a point on the ceiling. Now, I want you to press those hands up to that same spot on the ceiling each time. By picking that point, you give yourself a target and help control that arm path effectively. Finally, make sure your head is resting down on the bench, eyes looking up at that point on the ceiling, and you're controlling that head position throughout. As you get a little bit heavier with weights, we sometimes have this tendency to tuck our chin one way more than the other. Try to avoid that. Try to keep an even head position throughout the press. The final movement I'll talk about in this series is the overhead press. So whenever you're pressing something directly overhead, you guessed it, same cues apply, but I want to explain the importance of these a little bit more. As you press overhead, you can put a lot of stress on your low back. So bracing around your spine, building that strong brace, that supportive brace is almost like the trunk to a tree. It helps establish that foundation so then as you grow upward or press upward, 
you're getting that support where you need to in your low back. So establish that brace first. Then when we talk about arm path, a good goal is to get your bicep to align with your ear at the top of the press. As you press up, think about aligning that bicep so it goes right beside the ear and then back down nice and controlled. This will help you get that nice vertical position we're looking for throughout that overhead press. So again, bicep goes up and aligns with ear at the very top of the movement. Finally, head position is critical. During that overhead press, it's easy to kind of turn one way or toward the arm. We want to avoid that. We want to keep a forward look throughout the movement to help keep everything in alignment. Just like I said earlier, when I turn one way, one shoulder wants to follow. When I turn the other way, other shoulder wants to follow. I'm gonna to try to keep that even and square position as we press overhead.